Africa is the world's youngest continent with 70% of the population under the age of 25. It's for this reason that it's believed that in order to move the continent forward economically, there needs to be a culture of entrepreneurship and not that of job seeking among young people. Over the years, there have been a number of business schools emerging on the continent. But what exactly is their role in helping build a culture of entrepreneurship? Who determines the curriculum and how can the business skills that are taught there at these schools be applied in reality? Joining us this evening to talk more about this is Puleng Mahwadibe, who is the head of the School of Creativity, Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Henley Business School Africa. Good evening to you, Puleng. Good evening, Tami. Now, Puleng, first of all, let's let's focus on, I guess, the mandate that business schools have. What is it that you hope to, to achieve? Okay, so business schools in general are developed for that very reason of building business capability to um, candidates or to society or to businesses. But um, the role has extended further in the last couple of years because of the way which we have experienced um, rapid change in the world that old business tools, old business models, old ways of doing business don't work anymore. So we need to rethink what and and create a new identity for business schools in the new world and to have business schools that are more relevant to their complexity and the wickedness of the problems that we face today in industry. So I think the whole uh, concept of business school is being challenged to emerge in a new way that is more relevant, that does capacitate individuals to rethink the way they do business and um, work and operate completely differently from the way they used to Mm. do it in the past. I mean, you you were saying there that the entire model has changed. And and I guess part of your mandate, because things have changed so much, Mm. is to actually start building this culture of entrepreneurship, um, I guess especially on the African continent and amongst Mm. young people. Is this something that you are focusing on, and if so, how? Absolutely. So the Henley Business School in Johannesburg, it's, we have recently um, appointed a whole new department that is focused on innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship because we saw this as a, as a it's more than a need. It's desperate. It's a desperate area that Africa needs to develop skills in. Um, for example, I did my MBA eight years back um, here in Cape Town, and it, the, the, the role of business schools has changed. The way we, we even think about business education has to change because it's no longer about um, building uh, people or, or empowering people to do business within a context that has been predefined. Mm. So we want to empower or capacitate people to be entrepreneurial. So it's it, it, another thing to finish your MBA and to want to climb the corporate ladder and move into director positions or CEO positions and lead an organization. It's a pressing and more desperate need to do an MBA and be entrepreneurial in your skills and create businesses and create jobs and capacitate others to also be entrepreneurial within your businesses. So it's a whole new set of skills that you need to monetize the skills, the creative skills that we have as Africans, to monetize the hidden talents or the known talents that we have as Africans, uh, to, to monetize the expertise that we have in order to start building um, new economies and new industries based on our creativity and our own natural talent and skills. So I think it's a whole new area that is emerging. It hasn't yet been mastered, but I think just the opportunity to create a school around it and begin to not only theorize it, but to formalize it. And I think it's also a skill that needs to be built 
from when kids are young in school, so from primary, secondary education, because sometimes I feel like what we are doing, like my work, sometimes feels more like we are undoing um, what has been done by the education system, which is in destroy the entrepreneurial nature of human beings. And 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 I yeah. wonder. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, you're mm. dealing a lot with, I guess, as you're saying, young people mm. coming from the formalized schooling system, but mm. they are perhaps not as visionary as they should be, and mm. pretty much like what you are trying to do, trying to reinvent yourselves. That the academic system and the curriculum also has to reinvent itself so that it becomes relevant for mm. for tomorrow's leaders. How are you trying to bridge that gap? Because ultimately, it is a mindset, is it not? Absolutely, it is. And, you know, there's research that shows that at the age of five, we use 98% of our creativity. And then at the age of 44, guess how much creativity we use? Five. Um, <laughs> Are you it's serious? And, and, and I thought my guess was really horrific, so it's even worse than yeah. my worst, too. <laughs> we use, it shoots right down to 2% of our creativity, and we only recover it post-retirement. Is that, is that, be- is, is, is that mm-hmm. now because I, I guess you reach a point where you've got to fit into a system and you're no longer being creative within you, the, the, the work where you, where you work, but you're rather just trying to tick the boxes, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. You're mm-hmm. just following rules. I believe so. I believe that is the main component of it. And um, when you think about young kids and the way they think and the way they are free, to just step into their creative nature and just define things. And they're not afraid of making mistakes. They're not afraid to um, um, just launch out. And then we grow up and we build these inhibitions. The education system gives us some big crosses whenever we get things wrong, you know. And we, we limit ourselves to settling for the first right answer and the only right answer. And... Sometimes we memorize to, you know, get through the education system. And then we get into industry, and corporates are not looking for people who have memorized. You understand? Mm. The world has changed so much. We want thinkers. We want entrepreneurs. We want people who create new products that are relevant. And you kind of have to unlearn all of that that you have been taught in order to release yourself into this whole new way of thinking. So business schools, then um, you would say part of the um, of the mandate now is becoming not only to learn but also to provide uh, environments where people are able to unlearn and then relearn mm. <laughs> certain things that are innate that they were born with. Now let me let me ask you this: What what are the entry criteria, and from what age can those who are entrepreneurially minded or want to develop that part of, of their mind and, and brain, at, at what age can they enter the institution and what are the entry criteria? Okay, so it's different uh, for, 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 for me. It's relevant at every age. So we are trying to work with some organizations and individuals. We have a PhD student who want to research on how we can bring this entrepreneurial mindset at primary and high school uh, uh, fraternity. And we are developing curriculum around that. We are co-creating it with them. But for the business school, uh, obviously we attract um, people who are ready for tertiary, but also people who have enough work experience and one of the, and this can be through accredited programs, short programs, and customized programs. So uh, with regards to accredited programs, we are launching an MBA for uh, creative activists and innovators next year in 2017 at Henley Business School. And we are attracting people who are going to go through the full curriculum of the MBA, but also want to add the edge to the MBA, the edge to think differently and to revive that entrepreneurial, intra, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, it's quite a word, and isn't it? It's quite a mouthful. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite a mouthful. It is. 
So we are um, we want to participate in that space where you want to do a, your MBA. You're in your thirties, forties, even fifties, and you want to just go back to you know um, uh, build your business skills. Mm. Here what about is an MBA that gives you an edge to also resolve that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. And then we also have an accredited program that we are developing, uh, a post-grad management practice, specifically also for creative activists and innovators. This is with respect to accredited courses. But when it comes to short programs and customized programs, sometimes we work with corporates and say, um, you want to bring the spirit back into your organizations, we can work with you and co-create a program together. We have done that for several corporates. So it doesn't matter the age really. Um, we are open. We work with um, groups who want to recover the entrepreneurial spirit. Now, what about somebody who's listening to this and says, look, I'm in my 50s. Um, I don't even have an undergrad degree, but I really would like to go for this MBA for creative innovators, uh, you know, for the creatives. Can they enter such a program? Does their work experience count towards getting admittance for them? Yes, your work experience does count. And unfortunately, we have to abide with the higher education uh, qualifications authority on that. So it's only 10% of the class that can be afforded to consider work experience um, in lieu of a formal degree or a postgraduate so we are always under pressure to make sure that the class that uh, the class of people that fall into that category doesn't exist ex, um, exceed ten percent. So is it a matter of applying early? Is it a matter it's of a writing? Matter of applying early. And do they have to write exams in order to qualify? No, which is the wonderful thing about Henley Business School is you don't have to write the GMAT exam in order to qualify into our MBA program in. Some of the MBAs in the country and abroad, you have to pass a GMAT qualification. And from my experience, Tommy, I did that um, nine years back. <laughs> the GMAT was the most difficult, difficult exam <laughs> of the MBA program. I guess you would say and that. West <laughs> of, it's modeled and designed by the Americans who are coming from the American system and were forced to write this difficult exam that has nothing to do with the way we are educated here in South Africa. So it's hell, but unfortunately it's the hell that some of us have, have to go through in some of the business schools. I'm very pleased to say at the Henley Business School, you do get an international MBA, but you don't have need an agreement in order to make the entry requirements. In order of, Now, yes, you are located in South Africa, but because you are Africa, I assume that you then attract students from all over the continent coming That's just right. for your program. Yes, we do. Um, in fact, we are the only uh, Henley. Henley is in a number of countries across the world, and we are the only branch in Africa, and we attract African students. And I just have to tell you this stats that um, Handy is based in the UK at the University of Reading. And among all the involvements throughout the number of countries that we are based, the largest involvements come from South Africa. So mm. 60% of all Henley MBA involvements are from South Africa. And so we constitute the biggest uh, portion of MBAs in the world within the Handy Business School context. And then... Further to that, our students pass sometimes better than the international students. So we do have very, very brilliant, uh, talented individuals here in the continent, and we just need a platform to um, demonstrate how intelligent and how talented we are as Africans, and Henley is such a platform. Now, let's go to the very sticky but very important issue of money. Uh, mm -hmm. Business schools do not come cheap, and some may say that money ends up being a barrier to entry for many in, into the schools. Mm -hmm. H how do you make them affordable? Are they affordable? Are there any sort of scholarships or bursaries available for those who are interested but cannot afford for whatever reason? There are very, very few scholarships available uh, for individuals, we recently awarded a couple of 
scholarships. But um, to be honest, everywhere you go in all business schools, MBAs are expensive. Ours is expensive. It's international. But um, sometimes you go through that, um, you know, just that space where you have to think about the return on your investment, you know, and how much am I willing to give up and how much is it going to make me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So it is expensive, but the return, what you get out of it, I think it's a lifetime benefit. When you and talk of expensive, uh, let's talk rands and cents here. Specifically, mm-hmm. I guess for the um, the School of Creativity, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship, because that's what we're focusing on right now. Mm. Yes. Rands and cents. Kitchen. Yes. So um, our MBA Plus, which is the MBA for uh, creative activists and innovators, you still pay a standard MBA fee, which. At the moment, I think it's around 240-something. I don't want to make a mistake here, but it's just over 240,000. And then on top of that, you attend extra two-week modules um, with local and international experts in the field of creativity and innovation. And you also have a community project that you have to do. Uh, over a period of time, you have access to a whole lot of online learning and interaction and you are kind of forming a, cre- a community out of that. And you pay an extra about 30,000 rent for that. So in total, your MBA becomes around over uh, 270,000 rent. To do that. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's quite a figure, quite a neat it sum of, of money over there. So this 240,000 is what, per annum? Yes, no, no, no. That's a whole uh, program, and the program goes over 30 months, which is about two and a half years. Oh, okay. So about 240,000 yes. rand over like a two, a two and a half year Three, period. Two. Yeah. And uh, as far as young people, I mean, I believe you also have um, shorter classes over weekends, uh, over school holidays, etc., for, for, for young people. How are those priced, and, and how can one get access to those? Okay, so we have. Open programs that we offer mostly on demand. Um, at the School of Innovation and Creativity and Entrepreneurship, we will start offering more of those short courses next year. But short courses on design thinking that sometimes run for three days, sometimes it's a full day master class. We have a number of master classes that we will be launching from November going forward. And if you look at a full day, let's say um, we have a series that will be starting, which is about becoming a resilient manager of the future. So it exposes you to where the world is going and how to remain relevant. When you think about the workforce of the future, how does uh, talent management look like in the future when drones begin to take over and artificial intelligence begins to take over? So we have a full day masterclass around that, the role of um, digital uh, implementation and management and so on and so forth. So we have those master classes that take a full day where you just want to get insights and um, we will cost it. We haven't yet finalized the costing for per individual per day, but we will cost it according to the demand. So we are still in that pilot phase where we are launching them out, seeing um, how 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 industry is responding to the change, to the need to develop themselves in these areas. And then next year we will have fixed prices for all of those. Mm. I mean, one Mm. thing that that you did mention is that you are in the process of co-creating a curriculum which is likely to find its way into high schools. Uh, Mm. Do you have any idea of of when this potential um, rollout might be? Is the, the Department of, of Education keen on embarking on this and, and making sure that subjects like business studies and you know creative thinking and entrepreneurship actually form part of the curriculum, so that young people don't necessarily have to be paying you know the two hundred fifty thousand rand mm-hmm. over two and a half years in order to have the skills and the knowledge in order to be successful entrepreneurs on the continent. Yes, so um, this is still in the very um, abstract space because we have a PhD student 
who is well connected with the Department of Higher Education, who is making still in the face of making a proposal and um, attracting um, some funding, attracting some traction also in the space. As far as our side is concerned, we have already collaborated with um, researchers in industry who have developed creativity curriculum in this space uh, internationally. So uh, someone like uh, uh, um, uh, Cindy Barnett at the uh, New York State University who has written a whole lot of books on how you bring creativity back into the curriculum has um, accepted an invitation to come and visit us from June next year. Uh, visit South Africa will create opportunity for him, for her. Uh, to start speaking about her research and also start co-creating with the schools. Because now, remember, we have to start from understanding the current current school curriculum and how we can build into the current existing curriculum without bringing a whole lot of change, but bringing little uh, changes in different aspects, say the way you teach math, the way you teach English, and so on and so forth, so that it drives more toward students applying more of their thinking and retaining the entrepreneurial spirit and retaining the creativity that is inherent uh, in every child. So this is something that is still in the very initial phases, initial phases yes. but we are working on it, yes. Before and I... once I have, uh, we, we have refined it to a point where we are clear we would like you to invite us back. Yes, I mean, I know you definitely yes. will let us know. But before I let mm-hmm. you go this evening, I've got a question here mm-hmm. from Usabelo Ngabinde on the At Life of Tami uh, Twitter handle. Usabelo mm-hmm. wants to know the assessment methods that you use, example, research, tests, exams, etc., that you put in place for learners. Mm-hmm. All of them. So it's very important for us to know that you have applied your mind and sometimes this is uh, uh, established through the you writing back to us. Like we, we spend a whole lot of time uh, with students in class getting them to reflect. So we give you different uh, uh, reflection models such as the Coles reflection model where we, are, we want you to reflect on different aspects, what it means to you. So we want to, we are able to establish from your uh, insights or your feedback, whether you have applied yourself enough, because ours is about self-knowledge, how much you know yourself and how much you allow yourself in class to open up and relearn even things about your own self. Mm. And then it's about, um, we also use a whole lot of action learning projects where we allow you to work with others so it's about now beyond knowledge of yourself how well do you work with others how do you understand different personalities and work with different personalities to unleash your best self so we have exams too we have assignments and we use all of those assessments to unleash um, or to understand how open an individual has been in a course like this and uh, we'll leave it at that uh, for this evening, Buleng. But thank you so much for breaking that down for us. I mean, certainly one can have the passion, but getting the skills and the know-how in order to be a successful entrepreneur and to actually make uh, meaningful contributions to society is just so important. But we look forward to chatting to you again uh, when you've thank solidified you. uh, the other structures. Thank you. But, Tami, I just have to say as well, too, that beyond the curriculum, the open accredited customized programs. We also have conferences that we have started introducing to unleash this. So our next conference is in uh, October, 15th and 16th of October. We have invited about 11 uh, international experts in the field of creativity and innovation for a weekend. Uh, We call it the Women in Creativity and Innovation Conference. And this is a space also for women to just come and unleash their best creative selves uh, in, toward the entrepreneurial spirit that mm. we are recovering. So and, and, and where can they find uh, information on More on information this? is on the Handy website. And we are also at this point also inviting corporates to partner with us to co-own 
this event because we want it open. We want it to reach everybody who, 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 who um, wherever it's possible to come and engage and receive and open up and you know allow yourself uh, to be a part of a weekend where we really unleash our best potential as women uh, toward um, recovery. I, I, can already, I can already hear the men saying, what about us? Are we not allowed there? <laughs> and some of the facilitators are men. So we are thinking about having a master, a separate master class for men. <laughs> I, I wonder, but is it important really to, to make that distinction between male and female entrepreneurs? I mean, what is the difference? Is there a difference? I don't think there's a difference, but I guess I am aligning myself with, you know, gender studies about how there are just less spaces. Women are less represented in many spaces, and there are lesser opportunities for them to just get together, empower one another, and make an impact, you know, and this is just one of those. And we have others. There's the SA Innovation coming on the 21st to 24th of September is attracting both men and women. The Sustainability uh, Summit coming on the 26th and 27th of September. It's also attracting both genders. Both men and women, yes. yes, So let's let's do this, uh, Puleng. um, Very very quickly, uh, Puleng, your your website address, www.henley. HenleySA.ac.za. .hendysa.ac.za. Yes. Awesome. I'm sure these conferences are going to be very um, enlightening. I'm, I'm quite interested to find out what uh, the differences will be and what the women are going to be coming up with uh, as far yes. as their conference is concerned. But thank you so much for your time, Buleng. Thank you for your time, Tammy. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yes, looking forward to having you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That okay. is uh, Buleng Mahualibe there the head of the School of Creativity, Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Henley Business School Africa. For more information, you can visit www.henleysa.ac.za. As she was saying, they've got a couple of conferences coming up for the remainder of the year. So if you're one who's entrepreneurially inclined, you may just want to pop by.